because of this free, you know, freedom that you have, that was given to you, because of the strong love bond, the bond that you have with him, you now tend to serve. You give yourself to other people now. You tend to be of service. You want other also to feel the joy. I think the Stream. most important part that you agree to be interviewed, you agree to be a testimony in the Eucharist because, because what has transformed in your life is what you want the people to learn, you know, and what the people to share the love that God has given you. I think that's the most important desire that you have, isn't it, Marianne? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it is, as, as you said, it's a very deep desire for people to fall in love with God. And because of that, to know that their falling in love, our falling in love, is only a yes to his love for us. And nothing, nothing is more beautiful. Mm -hmm. The world now is so much, you know, chaos. And it's threatening all of us. So we need him again to strengthen us. Exactly. Well, you're touching on the most profound aspect of being Christian, in that mm. it, is, it is relational. It's about a relation. God is not an idea. He's yes. a person. Yes. And He never, ever lets you be. He, he's, he can be very disturbing. Yes. He will say, hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or He will encourage you in ways that you do not expect. Yes. By, you know, a small thing can happen or a big thing. Yes. But He remains and He wants to draw us more and more into that relationship and that I think is the strength of the Christian faith that's its beauty mm -hmm. he is a relationship yes yes yeah. father and son and Holy Spirit he that's is why. that he mm -hmm. has given us so much chance like this 51st International Eucharistic Congress is really a wonderful opportunity to open our hearts and mind to him really to talk to him and understand him let him penetrate us so we should not lose this gigantic moment that was given to the Philippines and to other you know pilgrims who has come here from 72 countries right and with your experience you know it's really a very clear message that a warning is being given to us but a warning with all the this environmental change climate change you know the act of terrorism mm -hmm. you know poverty you know war everywhere there is no peace at all but the message was really the Eucharist can be a peacemaker. Do you agree with that? Completely, entirely. It is a peacemaker. Mm. It is, yeah, because that's where Christ is present. And where Christ is present, there is peace. Mm -hmm. Even if it's hidden, it is present. Like, for example, in my country, yes. where very few people still will participate in the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. But if it is happening, it is happening. God often works in the hidden ways. Yes. You know, he doesn't just hide behind trees to yes, play with yes, us, yes. but there are moments when he's on the ground feeding so that new life can come into being. And that is why, as a Christian, we can never, ever despair. Mm. Even in the deepest darkness, he's there. What I went through as a person, well, my nation is going through something not the same, but is going through a period of incredible darkness and pain. A lot of people in my country are suffering, rich middle-class people in particular. They're suffering because of a kind of poverty they've never known before in terms of relationship, in terms of loneliness, abuse, which is happening so in such a, a big present way. Mm -hmm. But God is there and he continues to be there and what will happen in the future, well, creates for us an opportunity to trust him day by day. He never lets go, ever. What is happening now is clearly a small message or maybe a big message to all of us all over the world. The world is not that yet, you know, hopeless. Just open your eyes, look up, look at the cross, then see hope in it. You're touching on something that's of great value and importance. That's open your eyes and look and look to him. Yes. That's one of the things I also said when I gave my testimony. God longs us to look to him, not to the despair, the yes. darkness, the difficulties, but to him. Yes. And when we do that, 
he will be the one who carries us through everything. He is. And who will bring renewal, mm. new hope, new faith in his time, because God's free. Sometimes we think that we can determine things. No, no, no. no, no. We shouldn't underestimate the freedom of God. He decides, mm. and we can joyfully follow, mm. but we can't, we can't control. We can only pray and be and trust, mm -hmm. but only. We only open our hearts and exactly, minds to that, Him, you know. Yeah, that only is actually, again, a gift, because mm. He is also God. And that is you know, where it, the relationship between God and humanity, history and the eternity, it's wonderful. It is unbelievably beautiful. Mm -hmm. Painful, yes, but eventually always, always ends in beauty, in glory, as the theme of the, the Eucharistic Congress also says, you know. Yes, yes. I really feel that your experience in life, your encounter with Him, you know, can really be a lesson to all of us, not only in the Philippines, but to all the people who shy away from Him. I hope so. You know, as I said to you before, all I can do is share what I have been given. Nothing more, nothing less. And that wonderful prayer by St. Francis, which we all know, make me an instrument of, and then all the other words come, and like, yes, make me an instrument. Yeah, which reminds so. me of John Cardinal Henry Newman, the blessed John Cardinal, mm -hmm. who, who I have an affinity for. He at one point, you know, wrote, Lord, if I'm going through despair, if I'm going to confusion, whatever it is, use it. And that, I think, is, is the right attitude of any believer. Putting ourselves, surrendering ourselves to God will only fill us with more joy, more hope, more peace. We will yeah. continue our beautiful discussions sa pagbabalik po ng Poverty Night with Elvira.